Hey everyone, it's Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty, and I'm here with Toaster today. We are gonna show you how I got all of my needles, crochet hooks, everything organized by making these adorable pouches with my new Cricut Maker 3. Let's take a little look here at my current needle organization system. It is not bad, but <laughs> it's not cute either. So I am using a lot of like plastic bags and random pouches that I have, which is fine, but sometimes it makes it a little bit hard to find specifically the things that I need. And the plastic pouches keep like ripping with, you know, use and everything because I'm getting into this bag a lot. So I got these little pouches off of Amazon. They're just canvas pouches, super affordable. I'll have them linked for you. Um, and I am going to jazz them up with some really fun labels with my new Cricut Maker 3. This thing is super cool and it is not hard to use, so I'm gonna show you how to do it. Let's get things organized so we know exactly what labels to make. It's in my birthday, yeah, cause I gotta say You're looking like a gift for me Wrapped up nice and neat, baby Get in my way now, don't be shy We'll be here dancing day and night Get in my groove now, don't be shy I've got everything separated And having all of these different things in pouches Is gonna make it so much easier for me to find what I need So we're definitely gonna replace the plastic bag for the crochet hooks. And then I had all of my size one, two, and three needles in one pouch before, but I have plenty of pouches, so I'm gonna divide these up so I have ones, twos, and threes all separated. That's gonna make it so much easier for me to find the size that I need. I have all these extra needle tips for my interchangeable needles, and I like to keep these um, because then I can put the one size that I need in here. And I did not realize, look at how many of these like in stoppers. This is full of that too. So those can all go into one pouch. And then my cords, I am gonna keep them um, in the baggies because the baggies are the labels, but if they can all go in one pouch together, that will keep me from fishing around in this larger pouch to find them. I'm sitting down here at my computer to make my labels that I'm gonna use. And I'm gonna show you how easy it is using the Cricut Design Studio. You can do this on your iPad or your phone as well, but I like doing it on my computer because it's easier to manipulate with like a mouse and everything. So I've already gotten started and I chose this really cute font called DTC Honeymoon because if you look at the eyes, they have little hearts over them. And then I started finding some images too because I thought it'd be really cute to do like a black font and then use another color for the images. So I've just found some different images here in the design studio. Like for my size one needles, I always knit socks so I found a sock image, um, but I need to find some for the other ones here. And I also need to add one more uh, text piece. So I'm just gonna go over here to the side. Actually, yeah, I'll go here to the side and hit text. And I'm going to uh, do a pouch for my in stoppers. So I'm just gonna call them in stoppers and drag it down here so it's out of the way and all everything else I think was yeah 43.22 and so I'm gonna make everything the same font size here there we go so now I just need to find some cute little images so let me do that really quickly and then we will create our design <laughs> You could be the first and the second and the third and the rest of it. You could be one of the things I love. Sunday morning breakfast with my bedroom door locked. They're like everything that has a cherry on top. Get on my list of the things Ooh. I okay. love. Okay, I think this is going to be really cute. So you might be wondering why I put 
two different colors, one color for the font and one color for the images. That way the system will recognize it as two different layers. So we'll do one whole sheet and it will cut out all the words, another sheet and it will cut out all the pictures, all the images because I want them to be different colors. That's the vision in my head. <laughs> I hope it works. Um, and I think it's going to look really, really cute. I'm a beginner. So if you're worried like this is too complicated, I promise you it is so much easier than you think. And all of the Cricut uh, videos on YouTube, I've been watching them to learn how to do these things and they're so clear and so quick. So if you ever have any questions, go there first because they are gonna help you out. All right, let's make this design. I've pulled everything out here so that we can have a little bit more space and a little bit more light. Watch this though, it's so fancy. I'm gonna be using the Smart Iron-On materials, and they're really cool because you don't need a mat or anything. You can just put them right into the machine and they will work. So I was thinking we'll do black for the words, and then I have this really cool iridescent uh, material that looks like this, and so I thought we would do that for the images since those don't need to be quite as clear. They're just kind of there for fun and to make it look really fancy. I'm gonna be using my roll holder today. Just take the material and set it down into the tray and then feed it under the first slot. All right, let's turn this baby on. So these buttons over here, this one is the load unload, which I kind of remember because it's like arrows. Oh, you're being very loud. <laughs> arrows like, up like in to load and out to unload this one's like your start button to actually start cutting your image and then this one's a pause so I've got the little roll holder here I've got it fed underneath and this is a little slicer which is super cool and I've got these things fed into the slots so easy so now I'm gonna click the load unload button and as it loads I just kind of push it a little bit up to the left just so that it gets fed under there properly now I'm ready to make my image so I am just gonna click in the top right make it and it will give me two different layers to make you can see it's sorting the project and I am using smart materials today so I don't need to use a mat but if you are you can choose that okay now this is a little bit of a problem so I am going to <laughs> spread some of these things out there is a red line that you cannot uh, cross here so I want to make sure my images will be easy to cut but not taking up too much space, but also um, within the bounds of those red lines. So I'm gonna work to spread these out just a touch. So I don't want it to be hard to cut these. All right, that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and continue. I love that this takes you through literally every step that you need, it's so nice. So we are using the Smart Iron-On material and I need to make sure that the mirror is turned on, which I have not done yet. So let me edit that. And we're gonna mirror those images or else they will all be backwards when we actually iron them on, which we don't want. Okay, I'm glad I said that. My shiny side is gonna be facing down. I'll show you how to load it. And the pressure can just be defaulted. I've already got my materials in, so now I'm going to go ahead and press that load button. You could be the one I trust. Okay, it's ready. Are you ready to see it cut? This is seriously so cool. All right, let's hit that start button. It's all done, so it's flashing this unload button for me, but I'm actually going to cut the material first and then unload it, which I can do with my little roller here. Might not be strong enough to do it one-handed, hold on. Now let's unload it and look. Look at all the tiny little letters, oh my gosh. This is so cool. All right, repeat with the other material. 
Now, I'm just showing you one material today, but the Cricut Maker 3 can cut over 300 different materials, including leather, wood, and fabric with 13 different tools. It is the most powerful and most versatile machine in the Cricut line. This is already turned out. Okay, you can. <laughs> there you go. Can you see it? Oh, barely. Look at that sweater. This is already turned out super, super cool. I just hope that. <laughs> I know I can do this, this part. <laughs> I know I can do this part. Oh, you can't even see the words, but they're on there. Um, hopefully I haven't gotten in over my head, but I am hoping to show you that if I can do it, you can do it because I am not usually very patient at learning new skills and this has not been bad. So next step is I'm going to cut out my images. I'm gonna try to cut everything pretty close um, because I'm hoping I can actually put them together on the bags and iron them on. Um, if not, there's another way to do it, um, but that would just make it a little bit easier, I think. So snip snip, I'm gonna get to cutting. It's the way that you left me Sat beside in your car in the backseat Wide awake is the way that you left me, oh Now it's clear we are here back at your house And I keep fading into the background I'm wide awake, now you keep missing out for sure desk for the second to last step before we can actually put things on to the canvas. This is actually called weeding and I'm so glad that I watched videos on how to do this. It's not difficult but I just totally tried to peel this off like a sticker the first time that I did this. Don't do that. <laughs> it's called transfer not stickers. Anyway, weeding is where you take out the background um, from basically take out the background, you pull it off. So then this part gets ironed on and then you pull off the plastic and you're done. So I did a couple of practice ones. This iridescent is gonna be so cool. That's the little hat. I'm so excited. So I'm doing a trickier piece right now where I'm doing these little socks and I'm having to pull out like the little pieces. So that's where it is clutch to have this tool and what you do is like it has a little hook on it and you can kind of like dig into the part of the um you know here's what it looks like before you can dig into it and then just pull it back and it makes it so much easier especially for the tiny little pieces so that you're not here like a sticker pulling at the corner and can't get it up this is definitely an activity that is improved by watching a funny youtube video so that's what i'm going to be doing while i weed all of these different pieces done. I did it. That was a lot of them. Oops, sorry for bumping the camera. But I learned a little something that when it's a big piece, it's easier to go like stab the material. And then when it's like little stuff, like in between the letters and everything, it's easier if you actually start at where it's cut and pull it up. I maybe chose things that were a little complicated at first because I kind of broke some of these things but hey i'm learning and honestly if you guys have any tips for me on cricket anything i would super appreciate it because i am still a beginner look at me putting my elbow in that um but after i did that top part i got way better and the bottom part was super easy so i am excited to see how these look so let's go heat up the easy press and we can start making the bags come into the kitchen now so that we can 
get this project finished up. So this is the Easy Press 2. It's basically like a giant iron. It comes with a little base and it makes it so easy to do these projects. This one's the 9x9 size, I believe, so it's great for t-shirts. So I'm just going to turn that on. Um, on Cricut's website, they have a heat guide. So you can look at the material that you're going to use plus the uh, material that you're pressing on, the material that you're pressing onto, the machine that you're using, you put all of that in together and it tells you what temperature to put your machine to, how many seconds to put it on there for. It tells you everything. There's no like guesswork at all. And then I've got my little mat right here. I've got all of my bag so now I just have to decide which design is going on which color because you know I like things to kind of match I've got two of each color so I need to figure that out and we're gonna get to pressing everything nicely laid out behind me but when I went to look at the temperatures on the heat guide I realized that these two materials have different temperatures so the holographic material actually has a lower temperature than the regular iron-on vinyl so I'm gonna do the hotter one first and then I will go back and do the lower temperature because that way the lower temperature holographic one will never have that higher temperature on top of it and I'm going to use this which is just a piece of an oven liner because I don't have one of those mats. Cricut actually makes them but they basically protect your other exposed design while you transfer or while you put the heat on it. So fingers crossed that that works um, but I'm going to get all of the words on there first and then lower the temperature of the easy press and then go back through. This is the easy part and I am beyond excited to see how these turn out. So my press is already set with a 30 second timer, but you need to preheat basically everything first. So I am just gonna take this and put it on top for about five seconds. I'm just gonna count like one, two, three, four, five. So now it's pre-treated. Let's slip that back over there. And that just kind of gets out some of the wrinkles. It gets rid of any moisture. And then I'm going to place this. I'm going to get it really like middle to high. Or do I want it in the middle? Maybe I want it in the middle in the design. No, I want it a little higher because some of the designs are a little bit bigger. So I want it kind of a little higher and in the center there. I think that looks pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfect. And now we're gonna go for 30 seconds. There, that's a little better. All right, so now we're gonna go for 30 seconds. So I'm just gonna bring this guy over, put him right on top, and start the timer for 30 seconds by pushing the button, there we go. And then apply a light pressure. All right, now, the instructions say to flip and do 15 seconds on the other side. So let's flip it over, put this back on top here, get that right on there. I'm trying to avoid the zipper and we'll do 15 seconds. All right, 15 seconds is up. And we're supposed to wait until this is cool to the touch. Right now it's pretty hot. So I'm gonna do a few more while we wait. This first one is cool now. So let's see if we can get it peeled up. I mean, I think that worked. Oh my gosh, it's so cute.
got all of the letters down. So now I'm just waiting for my Easy Press to cool down to 295 so I can try putting on these holographic ones. I think this is just gonna be the cherry on top. Remember, I'm gonna put this on top of the words to protect it so that it doesn't, it can't, you can't put um, heat directly onto it once it's exposed. So I'm hoping that that will work out fine. I think these are gonna turn out so good. Oh my gosh, I'm kind of giddy. I'm like proud of myself for being able to do this. Okay, I think this worked. Moment of truth, making sure we got this. Oh my gosh. That is so cool. I love it. Okay, repeat. Everybody's singing oh, everybody's singing oh. I don't know what it is about you. It must be in the way you move. Just say you want me to. We got nothing to lose. You're looking so old. You're looking so old. Now I'm moving closer to you. It's getting dark in this room Tell me what you wanna do Baby, let me love you, let me love you Let me love you, let me love you Baby, let me love you, let me love you Let me love, let me love Baby, let me love you Here's a little tip for you when you're putting needles into a bag. Put them so that the little, the pointy parts face the zipper so that when you're zipping it closed, you have to like focus, but when you unzip, it's easy and you don't have to worry about any of the little needles like sticking up and stopping your way. So harder for when you zip, easier for when you're unzipping. Trust me on this. Just say the word and we can leave this place. I'll take you anywhere you want As long as we're together Everything will do You got me going on I had to let the light of day come up so I could show you these again because they just turned out so cute and they were so easy to make. You can really see how beautiful, hey buddy, you can really see how beautiful the holographic is looking. Oh, I love it. And already this morning I was working on a project and so I went over and I grabbed exactly what I needed because it was super organized. I'm going to get these put into here and I have one more fun project to show you. I wanted to share with you one more super quick project that is like traditional Cricut fast and easy. I'm going to be making a customized sticker for my computer. This time I'm going to be using the smart vinyl that is removable because I don't want this permanently on my computer. I like to change things and I am going to be making it with my own Love and Stitches logo. So what's really fun about the design space is you can pull in any type of image that you want. You just go to upload over here on the side. You can see I've already uploaded my own logo and you can kind of mess around with the size. It gives you the different um, inches and everything here. So I have it about let's see, four inches uh, long, so it's nice and big on the front of my computer. So let me get this all cut out and I'll show you how we can put it on the transfer tape and transfer it to the computer because I don't want you to make the same mistake I did. When I first tried this, I literally peeled it up like a sticker, like I didn't watch any tutorials or do anything. I was like, I'll just try this on my own. Don't be like me. <laughs> Follow these instructions, it's a piece of cake. 
First, I'm gonna take my design and cut it down to a smaller size that's a lot more manageable. Then I'm gonna take my weeding tool and remove the background, and I'm putting into practice the things that I learned from those iron-ons, which is when you get to the smaller pieces, start at the actual cut and not like stab into it. It makes it 20 times easier. Then I'm gonna take my transfer tape and cut a piece that's roughly the same size as my design. Now I need to get my vinyl actually onto the transfer tape. I'm gonna use this tool called a burnishing tool and basically you just rub it all over and it will transfer your design from the backing onto the transfer tape. Now that my design is on the transfer tape, I can remove the backing and place it carefully onto my laptop. I'm kind of bending it a little bit so that I can place it center out so that I don't get too many bubbles. Then I'll take my burnishing tool again and rub it all over the design to really take it off that transfer tape and get it onto my computer. I have tried using something like a credit card in the past when I have purchased these decals from people and it just doesn't work the same. This burnishing tool makes everything 20 times easier. Lastly, I'm going to remove the transfer tape very slowly from one corner. It helps to kind of do a back and forth rocking motion and if anything is not uh, coming, if it's coming off and it's like staying on the transfer tape, you can just pause, lay it back down, and use the burnishing tool a little bit more. But it does work so well that I had no problems removing the transfer tape. Check this out. <laughs> this looks 10 times better than when I did it the first time, and it was like five times as fast. Who knew doing it the proper way would make it faster, easier, and look better? So I love that. I'm gonna leave that one on there until I get something like maybe some glitter or something. I don't know if they have glitter or vinyl, but that would be super fun. I would love to have some pink glitter stickers. Wouldn't you? Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you had just as much fun as I did doing something that's a little different, another craft that is not knitting. And I know there's a lot of you out there who are Cricut makers. You can find all of the tools that I use down below, the machine, everything. I'm gonna include the fonts that I use. So if you wanna create these projects, you can do the same thing. This is the best though. I love having everything organized. It's been one day and it's already made such a big difference in helping me find the tools that I need. And I cannot wait to create more projects like this. I know Ken's really excited because he wants me to make us t-shirts and stuff. So I will be working on improving my skills. You can follow along on Instagram for more of that. And again, leave your tips down below because I would love to start making more elaborate projects. I think it's gonna really enhance uh, my organization and my wardrobe. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Baby, let me love you.